I have a story uh, someone sent me to read. Okay. Um, so, hey, we've been live with... I should knock on wood. Oh, yeah, no. Um, uh, the ghosts are not with <laughs> us tonight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I said a little prayer on my way here. Oh, good. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I got this great story. It's going to take me a few minutes to read, but it's worth reading. Let me find it. You take your time, Shane. So it's called The Story of Steve the Elf. Hmm. Let me just make sure I'm reading from the right. So this should take a few minutes. But uh, yeah, this person said to read it. Okay. So I'll read it. Okay. We get comfortable. <laughs> Have you ever been around an object or in a room that made you feel uneasy? Some say it is a sixth sense humans possess to respond to danger. The feeling of being watched, the feeling that gives you goosebumps and makes hair uh, on your body stand up in attention. There have been, oh, that's creepy. There have only been a few times I felt this in my life, and this is the story of one of those times. I've never told the story to anybody before. I've only started recalling memories again recently. This was a situation I've tried to erase from, the me my, from my memory because it was so disturbing to me, and I still can't explain it other than via the realm of demonic possession. Interesting that we're talking about memory replacement yeah. after we just talked about MK Ultra mm -hmm. and the things they, they did. And we didn't talk about, oh, there's so much more I want to say about it. We'll, we'll finish the story before I get into Jack Ruby again okay. and, and brainwashing. <laughs> Many years ago, my son was around three years old. He told my wife and I that he wanted one of Santa's elves in a plushie, like a stuffed animal, um, for, for Christmas. I decided to give eBay a shot since you can usually find mint condition or even brand new toys on there for cheap. I found a well-made elf plush and des uh, described as new condition in uh, the perfect size. The package arrived a few days later. Oh no, is this a Chucky story? When I first opened the package that, that and held the elf, something seemed a bit off. Again, it's that strange sense I described above, but just a little tingle. I didn't think much of it at this point. I decided it would be good to go ahead and give my son the elf early since Christmas was less than a month away. My son was over the moon with excitement to get his elf early and couldn't wait to be tucked in with him that night. He decided to name him Elfie, the elf. Each night for the next several nights, I would tuck Elfie in with my son, both with their heads on the pillow and body under the covers. On about three or four after giving, uh, on the morning, three or four after giving my son Elfie, I started noticing Elfie was nowhere in the bed mm. come, come the next morning. I'd either notice him in my son's closet or all the way across the room. I asked my son why Elfie wasn't in the bed, and he told me he didn't want him in the bed with him anymore. Mm. He told me he was throwing Elfie out of the bed in the middle of the night. I picked up Elfie again and looked the doll straight in the eyes, this time making me feel more uneasy than before. It's difficult to describe the feeling, but you'll know if you experience it. Was this what my son was also picking up on? Children are supposed to be more attuned to these kinds of forces after all. Again, I continue to ignore the sense because I figured it's just my mind playing tricks on me. Of course, right? The next night I go to tuck my son in. I place Elfie on the bed with him instead of tucking them in together. My son immediately throws Elfie across the room and says, I don't want him anymore. So I ask, why don't you want Elfie in your bed anymore? He replies, he's not Elfie. His name is Steve. Mm. Steve? The elf told you his name is Steve? Mm. My son nods in agreement. I leave Elfie or Steve on the floor where he was thrown, saying goodnight and leaving the room confused. I go downstairs to my computer, sitting there wondering how my son is imagining all this. After all, dolls can't talk, right? And how did he come up with Steve out of all the possible names? Something tells me to look up my eBay order history for Elfie. When I read the text on the computer monitor, I almost felt like my heart stopped for a full three seconds. One of Santa's elves, Steve the Elf in the description from the eBay seller. I'm now in a panic, our reader says. I go back into my son's room, grab the doll off the floor, and say another good night. I take the doll downstairs to immediately get it out of my house. I look all over the doll, and there is no marking or label anywhere that would indicate his name was Steve. Even if there were, my three-year-old child wouldn't be able to read the label yet anyway. I look straight into the eyes of the doll again, and I cannot describe the feeling of dread that came completely over my body like it knew it was discovered and the jig was up. Mm -hmm. Just being in the presence of this object made me feel like I was in danger. I'm uh, currently getting chills and goosebumps all over my body as I'm typing this and, uh, and visualizing the face of the doll over again. Took the doll straight to the trash can outside and finally felt a sense of relief as the lid slammed closed. That was the last I ever saw of Steve except in the memories forever burned into my mind. I would say you should have burned it. 
a uh, new fear unlocked. I know, right? <laughs> uh, that was crazy. Like the finding, I'm trying to think like, is there a possibility the parents maybe said Steve at some point? Wait, so they threw the doll in, that was that? So I never saw more. it again. Never saw it again. Uh, I once had, uh, I was in a crazy relationship a long time ago mm -hmm. with a, uh, a lady who collected gnomes. Mm. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> when we broke up, uh, it was like, I was like, oh, thank God. Um, I went <laughs> to the you supermarket. Take a gnome with you? <laughs> I went to the supermarket. I, was, I remember getting lunch at the time. I, was, I had this job right next to, uh, near the supermarket. So I stopped there to get my lunch to go into work with. And parked, went in, got my lunch, came out, and I noticed right in front of my car on the curb was a little gnome. Oh, did she stalk you or <laughs> follow you? Have, she might have. I don't <laughs> and know. I was like, take me with you, Shane. I don't know, but it was super weird uh, that that happened. So That's I really get it. Weird. And gnomes are like weird to begin with. So. No, like all of us, like why? Yeah, it's why? Really it was weird. probably my federal agent walk watching me at the time they've been watching me for so long so he's like you know we're just gonna mess with shane here uh so let's get to our callers oh cool i think we uh let's see who we have who we got am i being the only one but let me see if they're let's there do it. brian let's do it okay man tom was awesome he was great so cool that we got to the memory replacement stuff uh i was gonna say like we didn't get into it too much but that guy jolly west was allowed into jack ruby's like hospital oh. and that's the guy who shot uh Lee Harvey, right? Lee Harvey Oswald. So they were, uh, he went psychotic after this guy visited his room. And that's the guy who I said is like the scarecrow from Batman. So it's just very, very bizarre Such weird uh, stuff. that this guy, you know, and that's also the guy who involved the Lackland. Brian? Oh my gosh. Oh Lord. Brian? Brian got great ones. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh my God. Hold on. Hold on. You're, Something's happening. All right. So it's only an hour and nine minutes in, and we got okay. our first, we got gremlin. first gremlin. That sounded like an actual gremlin. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're just, uh, Brian, sorry if you can hear us. We uh, couldn't hear. We heard you, but you were highly distorted. Are you still with us? I can't hear you. Sometimes. Okay. Okay. Put in the waiting room. Hold on. That's pretty bad. Gotta get him out of there. I don't know. He's blowing everyone's ears out. Yeah. Wow. Uh, maybe try wow. having him leave and come back. Yeah, I took him out. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. So, all right. Not so bad, an hour and ten to <laughs> <laughs> experience our first our first issue. Uh, while we wait for him, I'll say another story real quick. Okay. Um, hopefully he can come back, you know, maybe have him leave and come back and check his volume on his phone or something. All right. Uh, now that I've been doing this and people have been watching and, and uh, people I know in my life are like, oh, you're doing the show, people are calling in. I've been hearing a lot more of these stories. And this lady I know, I've known her for a few years now, she, um, she does use just like a lot of people, they'll say, I don't really believe in a lot of this weird stuff, but uh, I've experienced something weird. And she's yeah. like, you might not be my friend after you hear the story. I'm like, oh, trust yeah. me, I've heard crazier. I've heard crazy things, it's all good. She was like, well, she heard, she heard about the, uh, the guy from last week who was a gray alien in his past life, supposedly, okay. Mark. She was like, I believe, she said, I was hypnotized by this guy. Which is weird because Mark yeah, also, was yeah. and, uh, and I, again, I've known her for years. She, we've never had these types of conversations before. She was like, I was hypnotized by this guy and I was all of a sudden on a spaceship with like tall gray, she called them like demons, okay. uh, which I think is fair. And she's like, I never told anybody this, uh, but it always bothered me. And she's a lot into like, uh, we'll call it like woo type of therapy, you know, like okay. going to like a, I don't want to say a th it's not a therapist, but it's like, Kind of like a shaman, perhaps. Okay. Uh, I think there's even a better word for that, but we'll call it a shaman. But uh, the shaman was like doing, this is years after she was hypnotized and, and saw herself on a spaceship, never told anyone the story. And the shaman was doing some type of pra practicing something on her where she was removing what they thought were entities inside of her. Okay. And the woman said, you have been pregnant with a tall gray type of beast. And she, according to the shaman lady, was pulling it out of like her stomach. Yeah, you obviously couldn't see anything. But like she was like, I I have never told anyone about those tall gray people okay. that I saw on that ship. And now this lady is pulling out <laughs> this tall, tall gray baby, tall gray demon baby. <laughs> what? What? Which is so weird because of like uh, we're talking about Rosemary's Baby and stuff. And have you read that book or seen the movie? I seen the movie. Yeah. I was pregnant. and We watched. Are it. you serious? Yes. Wow, Nancy, is that weird? I don't know. Nancy was yeah pregnant with our second. I, like I read was the book like one for the first time. Had to watch it. It's it's so crazy. I mean, oh my goodness. Or right, how are we doing with the caller? I don't know. Let's see. Let's try it. Brian. Brian. You see, he keeps popping out. 
Brian, are you there? Oh, no. Nope. Brian, are you with us? He's there. For those watching, we're, we're trying. <laughs> For those listening, we are trying. Um, but, mm, um, we, we can hear you, but you're, you're very uh, blown out. You can't hear. It's all very disturbing. So we might have to... Might Sounds have to, like he's in a car. I yeah. have, like... That's Take right. him out again. Yeah. Well, can you pull up a story? Sure. Uh, look up goblins in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read this. If you can, oh when you gosh. find it and, and pull it up on a monitor. Uh, has anyone heard, have you heard the story about the goblins mm -mm. Uh, perhaps terrorizing this African village? Did it come up? Um, a couple of things. Oh, my God. Let's pull up. This is uh, what dreams what are, are the made options? of. Nightmares are made of. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like they might be connected to the ones coming here. We'll Something see. like this? Yeah, let's see. What do they say? Uh, is there, oh, is there an article we can read? Or, oh, 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 oh. Um, well, while you, while you find the article, there's a village in Africa that has supposedly been terrorized by goblins. And some people say they were, like, getting raped by goblins. It's, it's uh, pretty alarming. horror news. Let's try it. <laughs> let's try it. My thought when I read this, though, was that... Um, it was like the story we talked about in our, I think our first or second episode, the people in, I believe, Peru, who believe they're being attacked by aliens. Um, oh, is this, this is it? like a story here. What do we got? Are the goblins family. real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this after? Well, let's read this one first. Okay. I heard about this bizarre story and couldn't just ignore it. Where's this from, first of all? Let's, uh, um, horror news. From horror news. I heard about this bizarre story and just couldn't ignore it. This is one of the strangest things I've read in quite some time. I'm not sure that I personally know anyone who believes in goblins, but in Africa, that's another story. It seems that the culture feeds on this type of mythology. It's real to those people, and maybe it is real. I'm not going to be ignorant towards the apparent goblin problem. I'm open to believe. Uh, who wrote it? Do we have, like, a name? That's uncategorized. All right, let's go down. So, yeah, let's read this part. The incident? Yeah. The incident occurred about 8 p.m. on Wednesday. A fa and this is, this is recent goblin news. Okay. A family that claimed a lodger owned the goblin brought... Okay, a family that claimed a lodge, a, a, a lodger, lodger owned the goblin, brought it to the <laughs> station in a suitcase. I can read. No, we, it's, a, it's the writing. The, the writing is weird, right? Yeah. We heard some screaming. Uh, this is a quote now. We heard some screaming from the charge office, and most officers who had knocked off rushed to see what was happening. At first, everyone gathered around the suitcase, wanting to see what was inside, said a cop. The officer said a traditional healer who had come with the family opened the suitcase, and a weird-looking creature jumped out of a bottle that was filled with blood. No one told anyone it was time to run. One minute, the charge office was full. The next, it was empty. I think some people went out through the windows because we could not all have fit, it says fitted, through the door. <laughs> Fat cops and slim cops all ran. How is this real? I know. This Police is officers <laughs> gave different versions about how the goblin looked. Some said it looked like, and this is written and so poorly, snake. like a snake, <laughs> the head of a dog, and others said it was a dog with scales like a pangolin. Haven't pangolin. seen that word in a while. Um, <laughs> That's early COVID lore. They all agreed <laughs> that it smelt terribly. Uh, S M E L T. It's spelled the traditional. My three-year-old wrote this. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, people are saying they were seeing goblins. I'm so curious how this story is going to turn out. But like, what? Like looking like like. There's a by the way. There's a giant like black. There's a bird goblin cr uh, oh. that keeps flying up to the window. I don't know if people have seen that like a uh, crow? in the shadow. <laughs> yeah, like a crow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know like what the goblins are up to over in. There's Africa. a video on YouTube. That's too much. Let's try it. Okay. Let's try it. I hope we don't get oh, rickrolled. Oh my god! Maybe you should uh, make sure it's nothing like a, a rickroll before we go. We share what, the audience. To scan this thing. Right? Yeah, it comes yeah, scan it. Oh my god! Yeah, let's see it. Is it like a news? Like Blame is it a reporter? the Tokolashi, South Africa's most notorious goblin. Oh, that's this is bad. from four years ago though. So there's a goblin problem for a long time. From what <laughs> I've read, th this town and, and people like in this culture like have a real problem with goblins, and they believe it. Um, that doesn't look. Oh, that's a commercial. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, what is that? Is, it, is that a goblin <laughs> pole dancing? Don't make them watch this. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh my goodness. Have Sorry, guys. Um, We're just having fun tonight, you know? Have you bought uh, stuffed animals for your kids that you think are haunted? We've had five. Oh, no. I was like, yeah. We have 5,000 stuffed got some, but give her like... Uh, yeah, but you know what? My mother-in-law gave us like an old Elmo mm -hmm. and an old like like a uh, Bert and Ernie, whatever, mm -hmm. and that stuff. It, it's like, maybe, it, it's not even like it needs new batteries. It's mm -hmm. like, it's something's going on with it. It's very strange. My, So the thing that scared me the most growing up, on the, I was in a farm in the woods in the middle of nowhere, and the night was odd. And uh, <laughs> I remember watching Harry and the Hendersons. Oh, yeah. And so Harry, like, really oh, bothered yeah. Even though he was nice, he really bothered me. 
Yeah. Uh, and for those who haven't seen that, he's like a Sasquatch looking Bigfoot type character. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always figured he'd be in the woods. And then the other thing that bothered me was Alf. Yeah, Alf. My parents bought me a stuffy I elf. I used to have a stuffy Alf. And I was probably five or six when this happened. I threw Alf in the closet. <laughs> And he stayed there till I was in my like twenties. Oh, you can do. Yeah, that. he really, uh, really upset me. Wow. He ate cats. Oh. Yeah. Did you ever watch this show? Um, Chris loves this show. Oh, Chris, okay. Chris, Chris. He he loves it. I, I is not for me. I definitely watched some of it growing up. Or how could you not? You it's know, crazy. For um, those who grew up in the eighties. <laughs> Any luck with the callers? Oh God! Well, you don't want to watch his goblin. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. If we have the goblin, they pull it up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. What? Oh, what I turned this? the audio off. So well, I'm see. not talking about Dracula, but something a little bit more mysterious: the Tokolosh. The Tokolosh. Described as a goblin-like creature. So this must be. The purpose is to cause mischief and hardship for humans. Oh, what is this? this notorious South African monster is blamed for everything from theft to divorce. Also mm. called a Tikolosh, many believe it is real, even elevating their beds off of the ground to avoid becoming a victim of this diminutive creature. Mm. The majority of people have never claimed to see one, but if something goes wrong in South Africa, you can bet a Tokolosh is to blame. You can pause it. Um, it's so interesting <laughs> about different people, <laughs> uh, different like different cultures and the things they fear, and you're like. We have obviously ghosts in this culture and stuff like that. Goblins, not so much. We have yeah. Uh, I haven't really heard about chupacabra, in a while. chupacabra, chupacabra in Mexico, yeah, yeah. and I, I'm so curious how stories like this play out. Walking like, are we gonna? Monster. The reason I brought up the Peru thing is like we eventually found out that it was miners, M I N E R S, in like jetpacks of some sort, trying to I don't know what they were doing, but are we gonna find out that there's just someone raiding this village? Uh